Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at the major steps that are involved in creating a project schedule. If you're new here, I'm Candace Porter. I have a Master of Science degree in project management and I am also a certified project management professional. I cover Project Management Institute's 10 knowledge areas and five project management process groups in a different video. However, to give you a recap, Project management process groups include initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. You'll often hear these referred to as project phases, and one of the 10 knowledge areas focuses on schedule management. So if you take a look at the visual here, you will see that during the planning phase of a project, there are a lot of processes that should be completed in order to create your project schedule. They include plan schedule management, define activities, sequence activities, estimate activity durations, and develop the actual schedule. I'm going to walk you through the different steps that are required in order to successfully develop your schedule. Why should we create a project schedule is a question that I want to answer before we move on. It's really helpful with driving short-term project execution. So you are able to know which tasks are coming up and who's going to be completing them. It's a great communication tool, not just for the project team, but for project stakeholders as well. It enables you to prioritize work. It can be used for resource management, can be used for budget management, and it also assists with long-term planning of the project. It is such an important tool, and if you create it with logic built in, it's going to help you so much. I'll talk a little bit more about logic when we get into sequencing the activities. First and foremost, you want to create the work breakdown structure. I have a separate video on how you can go about creating a work breakdown structure. What you're trying to do here is create a visual depiction of the work so that you're able to account for all of the work that has to be accomplished in order to successfully deliver and meet your project objectives. Here's an example of a work breakdown structure. This focuses on building a bicycle. You'll see that the top here is level one of your work breakdown structure. Level two are going to be your major deliverables. You'll see here frame set, crank set, wheels. They all have to be delivered in order for you to successfully build that bicycle. Again, level one, level two, and then you start getting into your level three, which are even more specific tasks. The goal of a work breakdown structure is to break that work down into small manageable pieces that you can accurately assign resources, estimate cost, and estimate time. If you look over here at 1.64.1 through 1.6.4.3, these are going to be called work packages. Work packages are the lowest level of your work breakdown structure. It's going to be the level that you estimate your cost, your time, and your resources. Once you have completed your work breakdown structure, the next step is going to be focused on sequencing the activities and defining dependencies. Before we get into this, I want to make sure that you are familiar with a few terms that I'm going to be using. A predecessor is an activity that precedes another activity according to their dependency to each other. A predecessor, it can have several direct successor activities, and a successor activity is one that follows another activity. They can also have several predecessor activities. Basically, if we're talking about a predecessor, it's something that must be accomplished before another task or activity can kick off. So you have to complete this before you can move on to this. A project milestone, it's a task of zero duration that shows an important achievement in a project. If there's a decision that has to be made at some point in your project and the work is on hold until that decision is made, I always build in project milestone 
So we know when that decision is made, it can go ahead and kick off the rest of the activities that follow it. Here's a portion of a work breakdown structure for building a new house. So the new house 1.0 is your level one of the work breakdown structure. And 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. This is your level two, and we're focusing on management, structural, electrical, and finishing. Down below, you'll see we've got a mix of some of the milestones, and we also have some of the tasks. So if this is what we were starting with, we just successfully completed this, we are now ready to move on to sequencing the activities. You will see here in this diagram that we're now starting to put these activities or tasks in order. The left side over here being where the project starts and the right side being where the project is complete. You will see that there are swim lanes here depicting each of the level two work breakdown structures. So you can easily see where the task or activities fall. Project start. When I talk about project milestones, something that is zero duration, I always put project start in as a milestone. So when we get approval, okay, we're ready to move into execution of your project. You can put the date in there and then you know exactly which activities or tasks are going to come after that. Look here at management, for example. Once the project starts, the first thing that's going to happen is hiring an architect. This activity is a predecessor to approving the designs. Approving the designs is a predecessor to hiring an engineer. Work can and almost always will be done in parallel by different resources. You can create a document like this in something as simple as Visio. You could create it in PowerPoint. You could even use SmartArt and use a Word document. So the important part for this step is sequencing, so getting them in order and defining dependencies. Once you have the sequence of your activities and the dependencies defined, the next step focuses on resourcing and estimating the activities. Estimating the activities consists of two things. One, estimating costs, and two, coming up with durations. How can you go about doing this? One, expert judgment is always a great way. This is talking to subject matter experts and getting their opinion on how long a specific activity or task is going to take. Are there materials that are associated with it? If so, how much do the materials cost? What types of skills are we going to need as far as our human resources go so that we can make sure that we align those accordingly with the work that has to be done? And Alagus, this is another way that you can go about estimating. This is using previous similar projects data. If you're working within an organization and there are a lot of projects that have been done in the past and you're doing something similar, the best place to start is by looking in the project repository if you have one within your organization. Parametric is another way that you can come up with estimates. This is really using a scaled approach. I like to think of metric as math. If, for example, we're building a new house and we know that one square foot is going to cost $10 as far as putting in the floor and we've got 10 square feet, we can multiply that out and say, we know it's going to take $100 as far as cost goes for installing our floor. Bottom up is a way that you can go about estimating, starting at the smallest level possible. So we're talking about the bottom of your work breakdown structure, the lowest possible level, coming up with the estimates and then rolling them up. Three point estimation is also a great way to approach. If you think that you're going to have a range of durations as far as timelines go or a range of cost, the way you use three point estimation is to look at a most likely, an optimistic, and a pessimistic estimation. And you can add those together and average them out. What's my most likely number of days this is going to take? What's the best case scenario as far as the number of days it will take? And what's the worst case scenario? I'm then going to add those three things up 
and then divide them by three and use that as the number of days. You can also use this for costs, so same thing. What's my most likely cost? What's the best case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? Add them together, average them out. I also have a video on PERT estimations. It's similar to three point, except it weights the most likely option. And so check that out if you're interested in learning more. Again, it's called PERT estimate, and I have a separate video on that. All right, so we have now resourced and estimated the activities. We know what human resources we're going to require as far as the skills go for the lowest levels of our work breakdown structure, those work packages. And we have also estimated the durations of each of the activities, and we have estimated the cost associated with it. Now we're going to enter all of this information into a scheduling tool and set the schedule baseline. When we talk about a scheduling tool, a couple of really common tools. One, MS Project. It's a great tool for managing timelines. Another one, Smartsheet, also a great tool. It's really collaborative as far as being able to assign the tasks to other people. Um, I'm gonna be creating videos on both of these, so keep your eyes open. You'll see here I have MS Project open up. So this task name, this is going to be your work breakdown structure here, percent complete. It's all at 0% since we are not in the execution phase of the project yet. The total duration of the project is 74 days, and that is made up based on logic and the duration of the individual task. We've got the start and finish dates for each of the tasks, the predecessor and successors for each of the tasks, and just a tip. The predecessor, if you enter it here, the successor will automatically calculate. If there's a predecessor, there's always going to be a successor. It will automatically calculate. We've got some resources listed here by role. PM, the project manager, engineer, team one, team two. And you will see that there's a cost column here. Say for example, you're using a recruiting company to hire these different roles and it's a thousand dollar fixed fee every time you use their service. So $1,000 to hire the architect, $1,000 to hire the engineer, $1,000 to hire the contractor, $1,000 to hire the landscaper. File permits is going to be $850. You'll see, you can just go down and enter the costs associated with each of the tasks in this column. I mentioned earlier, there are endless <laughs> columns that you can add here to your project schedule. So feel free to explore the dropdowns and determine exactly how you want to set your schedule up as far as the information you'll be tracking. Our level one work breakdown structure is right here, building a house. Level two is just below that, 1.1 management. 1.2 structural is also level two. 1.3 electrical, 1.4 finishing. And you will see there's a lot of different views that you can use here with an MS project. If I go to the view tab and then to outline, you can go ahead and organize it to where you only see level one. Here is your level two of your work breakdown structure. If I go to view and now I want to see my level three, I'm going to click on level three. You see how easy that is to be able to roll it up and get a quick glance. Also, I wanna show you that if you go to the task tab here, you can move these tasks in or out. So if I scoot it out, you'll see I just made file permits a level two. I could scoot it back over, it's level three. You'll see, however, that these tasks also scooted under it, which makes them a level four. So now I want to just select those and move them out. So that is how you would go about making it level one, level two, level three, level four, and so forth. Very simple. You can just scoot them in and out. And again, you can always go back and just cross check your view, making sure if you go to level two that everything that is meant to be a level two shows up there.
So now that we've gone through the views and how you can see level one, level two, level three, we've talked about milestones, again, zero duration. And I showed you how I set up mine with project start date, project complete date. And what I have, as far as the predecessors here, I have the level twos. So level twos as they complete, feed in, and all of those must be completed before the project comes to an end. So you will see line 11 is this level two, the structural. 21 is the electrical, and 26 is finishing. Once all of those are completed, they feed in and the project complete date is calculated off of that. You do not want to manually update anything that is in bold and has subtask. That's really important because you want the logic that is built in to automatically calculate and roll up into the level two. You'll see here, if I increase the duration on line 20, I am going to increase the duration to 21 days and you will see this end date change. It's currently November 6th. If the duration increases, you will see that it now ends December. You will also see that structural, that work breakdown structure level two date has now changed. It's now going to be ending on the 2nd of December. Once I get everything entered in here, what I'm going to want to do is go to the project tab and look over here at set baseline, set baseline for the entire project and click OK. What that's going to do is be your approved plan that you'll be able to measure progress against as you move into the execution phase. So you'll be able to compare actuals as far as durations go, as far as cost goes, and that's going to help you know if you're ahead of schedule, behind schedule, if you're under budget, over budget. Another thing that I'll call out on the project tab is this status date. I always like to put a status date in here. You'll see it automatically populates with today's date, which is August 17th. That way, if you're not the only one that accesses this file, or even if you are, you can always go back and look at the last date this file was updated. It's a lot easier than you know saving a new file every time with a date in the subject line. So always go and just set your status date. That's all we're going to be covering today for project scheduling. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to the channel and comment below to let me know what other topics do you want to learn about. Thank you again. I'm Candace Porter.